Hello everybody, Daniel Bornt here, DanielBornt.com. It's been quite a bit of time since I've done a YouTube video. I hope everybody's doing um, well and staying safe during this uh, pandemic. I uh, hope you guys are all staying sane and uh, you know, using this extra time to spend time with family, learn some stuff, and play around with Linux. Uh, I've been trying that. I haven't really posted any videos lately because uh, it just so happens that as an IT professional, um, my work continues on and we were in the middle of starting a very large software implementation when all this went down. And my last couple of months, uh, my last three months have been insanely busy. So I've been putting in lots of extra hours at work. So even though I've been quarantined, I really haven't had the chance to make any video. So um, I wanted to run this video. So the video that I am doing tonight is really on um, the Ubuntu Unity Remix. I never really played around with Ubuntu Unity that much. I wasn't really uh, into the Ubuntu Unity thing. I really wasn't into Ubuntu at all. Back when this first came out, I mean, I played around with it a little bit when it first came out, but... Um, I remember towards the end when they were getting rid of Unity, I started playing around with it and I kind of liked it. It was kind of cool. Um, and then it died. So uh, I really wanted to take a look at this. So what I did is I downloaded the latest uh, 2004 image for this. And I'm going to throw it into a virtual machine right now and do a little tinkering with it. So I figure I'd sorry, invite you guys along for the ride. Um, it's 11 o'clock p.m. here on um, Wednesday, July 1st. So sorry if I'm yawning a little bit. It's a little late, but I have the old rain. So I probably won't be yawning for long. All right, so with that, let's um, let's get to it. So right now I have VirtualBox up, and I'm going to create a new virtual machine. I'm going to take you through the whole process, um, only because I think it's cool to see the whole process, um, how I set up virtual machines at this point and everything else. So I'm going to call it Ubuntu Unity Remix. This is my machines where I store all my machines. I'm going to pick Linux and Ubuntu 64 next. I generally give it four, four gig of RAM. So that's 4096. You do this over and over again. Um, you can do, um, you get to know these numbers pretty well. So if you wanted to do eight gig of RAM, it would be, um, what would that be? It would be uh, 8192. Let's do that. 8192, right? We'll go ahead and give it 8 gig of RAM. Because I got a 32 gig on here, so I might as well boost it up a little bit. Uh, create the virtual hard disk, and I'll go ahead and do that. We'll make it VDI, dynamically allocate. I normally give these disks 20. Uh, and then I'll hit create. So that creates that. So then the first thing I normally do is I go into the system tab and I usually give it, sometimes I give it, I usually give it four cores. Um, since I'm running video, I'll do th two cores. Uh, yeah, that should work. Um, I usually don't screw around with this display I always max out the display memory I leave it here and enable the 3d acceleration storage this is where I load the image file so I go to my images uh, and I believe I have that here Download. 
Ubuntu Unity. There it is. Okay. Uh, there's one other setting. I normally want to make sure that's unchecked user interface. Um, forgive me, there's this one spot in here that I gotta make sure it doesn't ask me for oh, where is that setting? A lot of times it'll pop up a little message that actually asks me to load. And I know it's a setting in here. I can never I can never find it anyway. Not a big deal. All right, I'm not gonna mess with it too much. All right, so once I get all the settings set, I leave everything else alone. I hit uh, start. It's already got the ISO in there, so I hit start. Now, right now, I've got this set to a tiling window manager. So, it's going to check the disk integrity over here. So I think what I'll do is I'll turn tiling off. I'm running Pop OS, by the way, so I could turn tiling off. So I should be able to expand this out. I have not run through this one in a while, so I don't know how long it's going to take. Hopefully it doesn't take all that long. It went through the integrity check pretty quick, so that's a good sign. And there it is. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I am gonna switch to scale mode because if I don't switch to scale mode, it's gonna stay small for that. So to do scale mode, I believe it's control Control S, Control C. So it's the host key, host C, which is gonna be your right control. So Control C will switch to scale mode. And then I should be able to make that full screen. Now it's gonna look kind of weird, but at least it's a little bit bigger. Um, I can actually, let's do it this way. This will just make it so that it's a little bit easier to read. So what I'm going to do here is we're just going to run through this install, right? So I'm going to do install Ubuntu. Uh, I'll pick English. Uh, normal. Download updates. Um, you can check this. I'm going to check this just because I don't think I have any third-party graphics drivers and stuff because I'm installing it in a VM. So I'm not going to check it, but if you have like third-party graphics, Wi-Fi, I'll check it for the additional media formats though. Click continue. All right, I'm going to do erase the disk and install Ubuntu because I'm on a VM. You can do some advanced features. I think in the advanced features is where you can do erase disk and use, yep, erase the disk and use ZFS, or you can use LVM. I'm not gonna do that. Or you can do your own partitioning. I'm not gonna do that either. I mean, a lot of cases I'll do like a boot, root, and home, but in this case, just to test it out, I'm just gonna erase and use the whole thing. So now we'll click install now. This gives me the uh, the breakdown of what it's going to do, right? 
right so we'll hit continue and this is probably going to run for a bit but I'll keep going so I am in the new I am actually in New York State so I will pick the New York time zone Daniel, I'll leave that as that. I'll leave that as that. I'll choose my super secret password. Yeah, it tells me that it's too short, but that's okay. Like I said, it's a test machine, so we're okay. And now it's going to do the copying file. So I think what I'll do is pause the video. can't remember what the command is I did a command is it nine or is it dot all right I'm gonna try and pause the video and see if um just come back when it's done and we're back it's all done <clears throat> so I will go ahead and hit restart Um, that took about 10 minutes, maybe less than 10 minutes. Not too bad. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit restart on this VM. I believe it removes it by default. see booting Ubuntu unity and there we go all right let's log in And there is the familiar sidebar. Um, I don't want to register for an account now. Uh, this is all the pre... I'm going to skip all this right now. I mean, you could go through this and sign up for all this so you can connect your Ubuntu sign on, your Google, Nextcloud, and Microsoft. I guess Nextcloud is nice and Ubuntu, the single sign on is nice there. You could set up Live Patch. If I were actually going to run this, I might do Live Patch now so that you could apply updates without actually uh, restarting. I was running that on Ubuntu Mate. That was pretty nice. Uh, this is just, you know, sending help improve Ubuntu, send system information to Canonical. I'll leave that on since it's a VM. Hit next. Privacy, location services. I'm going to leave location services off. You're ready to go. Here's some software you can install. Um, I know that um, Martin Wimpress uses Git Kraken for his Git stuff. OBS Studio. I've been getting more into Visual Studio Code now that I found the Vim plugin. Um, and then obviously they got more software here. So you've got some software. Postman. I use this a lot at work now. Postman. I definitely use Bitwarden. Uh, I use Telegram. I use Opera sometimes. VS Code I use. BLC for sure. I mean, so it's got some pretty good stuff right out of the box. Uh, I'm going to hit done. All right, there we are. What is this? Software. So there's your software center, your system settings, your LibreOffice, Firefox, files, and then search your computer. 
Now, I believe, you know, so the first thing I want to do is if I hit the Windows key, you get your global, your HUD, your global menu. I want to look up displays, right? Because the first thing I want to do is I want to change my display to be 1920 by 1080. Now, the one thing that I did notice is that I'm going to have to install the guest editions before I do that. I can get close to 1080 by doing this. So now what I can do, all right. So these are just standard updates. So I'm gonna update all. I might as well run the updates really quick. Shouldn't take much. I wanna run through the whole process and see how long all this takes. So the other thing we could do is we can do Now, why it shifted me back, I don't know. That's kind of weird. Maybe it's because it's installing updates. If I switch to full screen, yeah, see, it's doing that. That's weird. It didn't really keep my display. So if I want to get to that 1080, yes, keep this configuration. At least until I install the guest editions. Now, of course, I just ran updates and it's asking me for updates already again. I think what I'll do is I'll install the guest editions because this will help me. So this is going to run a script that will install the guest editions. So if I do a reboot after I install these updates and install the guest editions, when I reboot the VM, it should give me, it should allow me to pick my correct resolution. And all I did was go down here to do devices and install guest editions. And it loaded the CD into the drive and it ran the auto run there's an auto run script in here like if we um open this there's an auto run dot sh that should run most distributions should run that automatically when um you mount that so just be aware of that
All right, here we go. I'm going to restart, and uh, we'll come back in and take a look at it. Let's log in now. I'm hoping that once it completely loads, I should be able to go to displays. And it should now have my 1920 by 1080. And that is what I want. Cool. All right. So installing the guest edition, so now you can actually unmount this, you can eject this drive, you can eject the, the CD, um, good to go. All right, cool. So now this is your Ubuntu, Unity. Looks just like Unity. Um, we can look at themes, right? So if I remember correctly, here's where the themes are. So you can do a Duata, you can do um, Ambiance, Radiance, or that ugly high contrast, which nobody likes anyway, I don't. We'll leave it with the Duata. I think that's the general. Actually, I think I like Radiance the best. No, I like Ambiance. Eduardo's too light. I don't like light themes, so we'll go with Ambiance. Um, that seems to look pretty good. Icon size. I don't need my icons that big. Um, 32 is probably pretty good for me, maybe. Maybe 30, 30, 34. I don't like them huge. 34, 36. They got some nice wallpapers in here. Um, I think I'll stick with the Fosa. Although they do have the dark Fosa. That's kind of sweet. I kind of like that one. I'm a dark, dark kind of guy anyway. All right. I like that one. Auto hide the launcher. So that turns this on over here. So that auto hides unless you go over there, right? I think you have to actually. The launcher will reveal when moving the pointer to the defined hotspot. Which I don't know what the defined hotspot is. Oh, reveal location. Left side. Top left corner. So uh, you can enable your workspaces. I like having workspaces. Okay, we'll, we'll cancel that. So now if I go to the top corner. Well, that didn't work out very well, did it? At least you can get the system settings from there. So that doesn't that that wasn't working. So I'm going to turn that back on because it really didn't like that. All right, desktops, workspaces. I forget how you get to the different, oh, workspaces are right here. 
So that's how you get to your different workspaces. I'm sure there's a button. The obviously the Windows key brings up your your search. Um, so you can search for software, you know, terminal. I wonder what terminal this is. GNOME terminal. So again, this is Unity. So you have your, you know, you have your uh, your global menus are all up in the top bar, which isn't horrible. So, I mean, it's Unity. What do you want? There's not a ton of software on here, right? Let's see what software it comes with. So here's your applications, recently used, folders, search videos, music, and pictures. So this is the software you get. So you don't get a ton of software installed by default, but that's fine. Uh, you can install the software you want. You get some basic stuff. Uh, you get LibreOffice installed. You, you, get, you get your browser, your Firefox browser installed. Um, weird thing about this is if you start to search that's where this is really powerful like you're not going to see all your applications in here so you can filter But really what you want to do is you want to just come in here and start like searching for stuff. So you want to get on the web, you search for web. You want to do videos, you look for videos. Um, and then you can get a video. Cheese is installed by default, which is kind of nice. I don't really want to run cheese though because I'm running my camera on something else. So we don't want to... But it's all your search function, right? So let's say, um, and you got this video here. This is like Gnome's video. Again, to close, you're gonna want, if it's full screen, you're gonna wanna go up top. Once it full screens, all your buttons are up here. If you drag it out of full screen so that it's a window, then that's that. So, anyway, it is kind of cool. I mean, it is kind of nice. It's it's Unity, right? Oh, that's weird. The application video has closed unexpectedly. I'm not going to send it here right now. Anyway, that's kind of a quick look at Unity. Um, again, it's not something I would necessarily use. Um, I'm not big on this unity like i think it's cool that they've remade it and to a certain extent it's i mean it's very cool that they've made this unity desktop alive again which i think is awesome because i think the choices are important right but personally i'm really not into a lot of these desktop environments um I like stuff that gets out of my way. I like tiling environments. I like things where I can set up a lot of shortcut keys. And um, I like I like a desktop that I can customize and then migrate the settings around to different Linux distributions as I'm trying. So that's why I'm kind of like into the tiling window managers like BSPWM or i3 or things of that nature where I can actually just customize the window manager to do what I want it to do 
customize my keyboard shortcuts set all those files up in either GitHub or GitLab or whatever archive it to my Dropbox or whatever and then I can just do it and I do a lot of stuff at the terminal like a lot of my a lot of my programs are terminals now I do like unity I, I mean I do like the Ubuntu's because I get the ability to use snaps out of the box um, I am a big Um, I like snaps. I know a lot of people, there's like a whole thing with snaps. Um, I like snaps. Um... So like if I wanted to see, these are all the snaps that are installed by default. So they've got the core on this GNOME 3.4 is actually a snap. The common themes is a snap and then they have the snap store and of course SnapD is an actual snap. So, but I kind of like snaps. I do believe this thing does have the ability to do app armor though. So you can run app armor. Excuse me. Flat pack is pretty easy to set up on most of this stuff too. But anyway, guys, that's my quick look at Unity. I really like this. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I would probably, again, this is just a quick VM look. Um, I will probably try it on hardware. Only because you get better results when you try it on actual physical hardware than in a VM. So. Um, I may try it out on physical hardware and do another video once I get it installed on vis physical hardware. But for now, I mean, I think it's cool. I think it's cool that they've been able to resurrect it and keep it going. Um, I think having the choice is very important. Uh, you know, the software that you can get in here is pretty good. Uh, if you want to do... I'm sure there's developer tools in here, right? So like under developer tools, um, obviously Emacs is in here, Meld is in here. I'm sure Visual Studio, oh, well, we already saw the Visual Studio code is something that's in here. So there's a lot of developer stuff in here. So anyway, I think this is pretty cool. I think it's awesome. I think the developers of this have done an excellent job. It's not necessarily something I'd run as a daily driver, but I think it's great for those folks that want that throwback to Unity. And um, yeah, that's my take. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'm gonna shut this down. Shut down this, um, this VM. I hope you all enjoyed the video and um, I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.